Today we're going to talk about switch end stops on the Big Tree Tech Octopus version 1.1. Now there's two different types of end stops that I want to talk about. The first one is a switch end stop with electronics on it. So these electronics are either resistors or capacitors and they're designed to smooth out the signal that you would get down your signal cable, which is a green cable here. We also have a black cable right here, which is ground, and then a red cable, which is voltage. So it goes signal, ground, voltage. On this one, we have just a simple end stop. So if it were to engage, it would allow current to pass all the way through. So the wires are actually obviously black and red, but in this case, the black one and the red one don't matter, but the red one's gonna be treated as signal. It's not gonna be on voltage. So I'll show you how to hook up both of these in our end stops, but unfortunately, we're gonna have to look at the diagram because they're not labeled like they normally would be over here, and there's eight of them total that correspond to the actual steppers up here for judging the end of filament or obviously the end of an access. So let's go over to the computer for a second. And on the computer, we have to pull up the repository for this. So we're gonna search on Octopus and we're gonna pick the Octopus down here. Then we're gonna go to hardware and then pins. So as you can see, these are the pins that we're looking for, but let's zoom in, see if we can get a better image of this. So as you can see down here, we have diag 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, because you always start at 0, so there's 8 of them. Notice that it starts out voltage, ground, and then the signal pin. So these pins are gonna be unique. So voltage, ground, signal. So on the second servo, or excuse me, on the second end stop, we're gonna do ground and signal. On the other one, we'll use all three. But we have to verify that they're X and Y. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. So if we go over to VS Code and we open up the current version of Marlin, which is gonna be in my downloads folder and extracted, we have to go to the first Marlin folder, then the second Marlin folder and select the folder. First thing we need to do is set up this so it actually builds with the correct configuration. So I'm gonna to go to the Marlin folder, then the source folder, then the core folder, then boards.h. I'm gonna search on octopus and that'll bring us to our board, which is the 1.1 version. So we'll copy that. And we'll also note the actual chipset, which is STM32F4. That's gonna be important when we set up the actual configuration for the platform io.ini. But for now, we're gonna go over to the marlinconfig.h and search on motherboard. And we're gonna paste our board right there. Then we're gonna change the serial port to negative one. Hang on a second here. Apparently my backspace is not working, so we'll do this a different way. Interesting. Anywho, let's try doing this a different way. Apparently my computer is not being helpful. So let's try it this way. There we go. So apparently Backspace all of a sudden decided not to work. But those are the two configurations for that. Let me show you real quick how to set up the INI. So we're gonna find our board, which is STM32F4, and we're gonna search on Octopus. if I can spell it correctly. There we go. And I'm gonna copy 
the configuration for the environment. Then I'm going to go over to platformio.ini. I'm going to highlight the Mega 2560 and paste over that. Then we'll go back over to configuration.h and there's some special things that we need to check for end stops. So we're going to search on end stops or end stop and we have end stop settings. So you can see that we're going to be using X minimum, Y minimum and Z minimum. Now we could use a pull up resistor in this case, but we don't really need it. You can see that it prevents a floating point state. Um, usually they work pretty well, so you don't have to worry about that, but we will have to address inverting because with the switch end stop, it may give us the wrong answer being triggered. And then we trigger it with our finger. It may go to open. So I'm going to change the false to a true for the X end stop for the X minimum and leave the other one alone because there's no circuitry on that. But let's confirm what's going on with the actual end stops to make sure we're connected or going to be connected to the correct ones. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the Marlin folder, then the source folder. Then we're going to go to the pins folder. Then we're going to find our chipset, which is STM32F. And we're going to find our board, which is right here. Whoop, pardon me. Right here. And it says go to the common folder, which was the one I was just on. So as you can see down here, they actually label the diag pins that match our configuration. So PG6 is the X end stop and PG9 is the Y. So if we go back over to the browser, you can see that it's PG6 and PG9. So it's X and Y. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back over to the board in a second, but I'm gonna kick off the actual compile. So let's verify that we have everything set real quick because the main thing is the environment. So over here we have that set. So we're gonna clean out the previous build and then we'll click on the checkbox to build. And just so you know, if there's an issue with the build, hit the checkbox a second time. If on the ending of the second time it fails like the first, correct the very first error that you encounter in this little uh, scrolling right here. It'll probably be in red. So let's go over the board for a moment because I'm pretty sure it's going to be successful this time. So on the board, we're going to pick up our connection here and you remember how it's voltage, ground, and then signal. So we're going to connect this with the red wire being on top, then ground, then signal. So we'll connect it like so. Then for this one, we're only going to do ground and signal. So we're going to connect it there. And the top pin should be empty because we're not using voltage in that case. So let's go back over to the computer after we pop this out. And we put it in a USB to actually load it. So the SD card goes in here and this goes into the computer. Now we'll go back over to the actual computer and we'll go to the .pio folder. We'll go to the Big Tree Tech Octopus folder and then down here it says firmware.bin. So we'll right click on that and we'll reveal in File Explorer. Now here's our drive currently and it has a firmware.cur and attempt.cur. This is from a previous build. So I'm just gonna delete that for now and I'm going to go back over here and right click and send this to the actual drive. So that's now on the drive. If this is a successful load, it will convert this to firmware.cur in capital letters. If it's unsuccessful, it'll still say firmware.bin. So you'll know you did something incorrect. So let's go back over to the workbench for a second. I'm going to pop out the drive. I'm then going to place it inside of here. 
and then I'm going to attach this and see what goes on with power. So at the moment, the firmware is loading, which means that I have USB control set with the jumper. Normally you would take that off when you're using PSU power, but we're only using five volts to test this. So what we're gonna do next is we're actually gonna go over to what's known as Pronterface so that we can actually test this. So in Pronterface, as you can see right here, we have the option to connect and it says COM port one. I know it's not COM port one, so I'm gonna show you how to check it. So inside of here, what we'll do is we'll type device manager. You may not see it initially because sometimes it goes to the other screen. So I'll bring it over and I'll click on ports and you can see there's a COM port nine. That's probably going to be our device because COM part one's a default for the computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to backspace over the one, change it to a nine and connect. And so now it says connecting printer is now online. To check the actual end stop though, you're going to type M119 and press enter. And as you can see, we have two open and then one triggered. This is the one that's not connected. So what we'll do is we'll test this now. So we're gonna go over to the actual Y axis, click it with our finger and do the same command of M119 and press enter. And you can see it's triggered. Now I'll let my finger go and press enter again and it says open. So let's try the other one. So now let's do that and you see that it's triggered. So let's let it go and press it again and it's now open. So I need to thank all of my patrons and also the people on PayPal for helping make this possible. If it weren't for you guys, I wouldn't be able to afford to do this with my time. So everyone, if you like the tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe and thank you for your time.